There is likely to arise soon a significant tension between my primary goal of capital preservation and the secondary goal of income generation, which is almost as important to me. As discussed in item number 4C of my last post, I was only willing to buy two one-year treasury bills at the last auction, knowing that I needed to shift more interest income into 2025 from 2024 due to the likely decline in short-term interest rates that will occur. The problem that I'm having results in part just from my difficulty in accepting a slightly uh, lower yield going out one year compared to buying a six-month treasury bill. I am going to overcome that mental block. The difference in those two yields was just 0.278% for purchases that I discussed in my last post. I bought five of the six-month Treasury bills auctioned last Monday and will be buying five of both the three-month and the six-month Treasury bills uh, that will be auctioned tomorrow, Monday, March 25th. The principal amount of those bonds bought at auction is $1,000 per bond. The difference between the six-month investment rate, which I will just refer to as IR here, which is currently near the midpoint of the, of the Fed fund range of 5.25 to 5.5 percent, and the current one-year Treasury bill, IR is only equivalent to just one 25 basis point cut in the federal funds rate. That at least suggests that I might receive more income by buying a six-month treasury bill and then rolling it into another six-month treasury bill purchase rather than buying a one-year treasury bill now. There is no way to know whether the federal funds forecast implicit in the Treasury bill yields is simply a reflection that the buyers of those bills view the federal funds rate to, to have no more than a 25 basis point cut within the next year, or reflects a supply-demand imbalance that requires slightly higher Treasury bill yields than what would be reflected just in the Fed fund ranges predicted by the federal fund's futures contracts. The second part is related to the first. The Treasury bill investment rates are just not consistent with what is being predicted in the federal funds futures contracts. The forecast embodied uh, in the Treasury bill yields indicate only one 25 basis point cut in the Fed funds range sometime late in 2024. The federal funds forecast embodied in the Treasury bill yields may be lower due to the supply issues and the yield necessary to clear the debt that the Treasury is trying to sell in the Treasury bill auctions. The CME FedWatch tool as of last Friday had a 77.1% probability that the range in the federal funds rate will be 4.5% to 4.7% or lower and that rises to 95.1% at 4.75 to 5% or lower. And there is only a 0.45% probability now in the federal funds futures contracts that the range will be unchanged from the current 5.25 to 5.5%. The more probable than not estimated range using the CME FedWatch tool in September 2025 is just 3.75% to 4% or lower. 
If that forecast proves to be spot on, and I had to at least uh, give some chance to that actually happening when preparing my investment strategies now, my interest income in 2026 is going to be a lot lower than what I'm going to receive in 2024. I have decided uh, to at least up my purchase at the next uh, one-year Treasury bill auction scheduled for Tuesday, April 16th to $10,000 in principal amount, provided that the investment rate is likely to be near 5%. I am also starting to buy some treasury notes with coupons higher than 4% and yields to maturity around 4.8 to 4.9% that mature in the 14 to 20 month range from now. I cannot buy treasury bills or notes in that range at auction. There is only uh, there is no auction in between the one year treasury bill and the two year treasury note. I, I think I participate in the last two-year Treasury note and will probably participate in the next one. Even if I am successful in equalizing interest income in 2024 and 2025, notwithstanding a decline in short-term interest rates, that does not solve the longer-term problem of what happens in 2026 and thereafter if short-term interest rates do fall to 3.5% or lower. Our current approach, which I barely started to implement, is to increase my purchases of higher yielding dividend stocks, particularly equity, real estate investment trust, and dividend growth stocks that have at current yields in excess of 4%. Given my conservative nature, which prefers the return of my money and a willingness to exchange lower income in exchange for that the promise to return all of my money, I am likely about to be forced into taking more equity risk, which is currently at less than 15% of my total portfolio. I, I simply have a mental block in that has to be overcome, that is described possibly best by the old saying dating back to the 15th century England, a bird in hand is better than two in the bush. My ancestors came from England, so maybe my mental block is tied to that old saying. My nine times great-grandfather arrived in America in 1635 on the English ship, the Primrose, that sailed from England to Virginia. And we have been in the South ever since. 